okay guys welcome back to the uh, lecture series of uh, design of reinforced concrete its first part and today's topic is flexural behavior of uh, rc beams uh, let's begin with the introduction the analysis and design of a structural member may be regarded as the process of selecting the proper materials right for example uh, what are you using for longitudinal bars transverse bars the concrete the type of concrete etc the spacing of the stirrups the number of bars right uh, and determining the member dimensions for example the width of the beam right and the depth of the beam such that the design strength is equal or greater than the required strength so design strength is basically the capacity of the structure and the required strength is the demand on the structure right the required strength which is demand is determined by multiplying the actual applied loads which are the dead load assumed life load and other loads such as wind seismic earth pressure fluid pressure snow and rain loads by some load factor and that load factor should be greater than or equal to 1 now these loads develop external forces such as bending moments, shear force, torsion or axial forces depending on how these loads are applied to the structure right. For example on column the primary force uh, are axial forces and in beams the primary forces are shear and moment. So in proportioning reinforced concrete structural members three main items can be investigated. Number one the safety of the structure which is maintained by providing adequate internal design strength. Number two, the deflection of the structural member under service loads. So the maximum value of deflection must be limited and is usually specified as a factor of the span to preserve the appearance of the structure, right? So it depends upon the length of the beam or the slab and the deflection must be associated with that. Number three, control of cracking conditions under service loads. It is very important because visible cracks spoil the appearance of the structure whether the structure is safe and also permit humidity to penetrate the concrete causing corrosion of steel and consequently weakening the reinforced concrete member. So the ACI code implicitly limits crack width to 0.016 inch for interior members and 0.013 inch for exterior members and control of cracking is, is achieved by adopting and limiting the spacing of the tension bars right. <coughs> now what are the assumptions uh, in uh, developing the uh, uh, design equations or understanding the behavior of the uh, reinforced concrete in flexure? So reinforced concrete sections are heterogeneous, we already know that. They are non-homogeneous because they are made of two different materials, concrete and steel. Therefore, proportioning structural members by strength design approach is based on the following assumptions. So there are different assumptions that we need to understand. For example, number one, strain in concrete is the same as in reinforcing bars at the same level, provided that the bond between the steel and concrete is adequate. So uh, we are embedding steel in concrete, just like uh, you saw in this picture, right? So steel is embedded in concrete and uh, we are assuming that the bond between steel and concrete is almost perfect, all right? There is no slipping and uh, <coughs> the stresses in steel uh, at the same point will be equal to or uh, sorry the strain in concrete is the same as strain in reinforcing bars right the second assumption is strain in concrete is linearly proportional to the distance from the neutral axis and uh, it is uh, <coughs> it will be explained uh, in the coming slides in detail the elastic modulus of all grids of steel is taken as 29000 ksi the stress in the elastic range is equal to the strain multiplied by st uh, elastic modulus, right? And place plane cross sections continue to be plane after bending. So this is a one of very important assumptions because the uh, Timoshenko beam model is not considered and simple Euler beam model is uh, considered in, the, in, in developing this equation. Now this is what uh, shows you that uh, this is the beam, right? and uh, when it deforms uh, under uh, uh, external applied loads so this is the deformed shape and uh, <coughs> this, this plain section which was plain before bending it should remain plain after bending and uh, let me show you from this picture right it can be shown here so you can see that the rectangular blocks in this plane and this plane are still rectangular after bending all right 
so the plane section remains plane after bending the fifth assumption is that tensile strength of concrete is neglected why because concrete tensile strength is about 10% of its compressive strength and con cracked concrete is assumed to be not effective and before cracking the entire cross section is effective in resisting the external moment so when there is no cracking so entire section is there when uh, concrete cracks so it is not affected effective in tension side and we ignore the concrete in uh, tension side right number 6 the method of elastic analysis assuming an ideal behavior at all levels of stress is not valid why because at high stresses non elastic behavior is assumed which is in close agreement with the actual behavior of concrete and steel number 7 at failure the maximum strain at the extreme compression fibers is assumed equal to 0.003 right and uh, this thing will keep on repeating in the coming slide so please uh, uh, keep it in mind the value that the extreme compression fibers we are talking about concrete right the strain is uh, uh, considered as 0.003 and number 8 and the last assumption is that for design strength the shape of the compressive concrete stress distribution may be assumed to be rectangular parabolic or trapezoidal so in this uh, text uh, we will be discussing the rectangular shape right because uh, it follows aci 31822.2 the third topic is uh, regarding the behavior of simply supported rc beam loaded to failure so let me show you that uh, what happens when a beam is subjected to uh, some kind of uh, loading right a uh, gravity loading so the top fibers are subjected to compression given that the beam is simply supported right and the bottom uh, fibers are subjected to tension right and there are no stresses at the neutral axis so concrete beam being weakest in tension a concrete beam under an assumed working load will definitely crack at the tension side and the beam will collapse if tensile reinforcement is not provided right if there are no reinforcement at the tension side then this concrete beam will collapse suddenly now concrete cracks occur at a loading stage when its maximum tensile stress reaches the modulus of rupture of concrete right therefore steel bars are used to increase the moment capacity of the beam the steel bars resist the tensile force and the concrete resists the compressive force right so this compression is resisted by concrete and here we need to provide steel that that will resist the tension just like this one so this will be the final uh, distribution of the forces or the stresses along the cross section of the simply supported beam that uh, concrete block you can see this concrete it is resisting the compression and there is only steel at the bottom which is resisting the tension now to study the behavior of an rc beam under increasing load let us examine how two beams were tested to failure there are two beams uh, just like here and both beams have a dimension a section of 4.5 inch wide and 8 inch deep reinforced only on the tension side by two number 5 bars they are made of same concrete beam 1 has no stirrups and beam 2 uh, has uh, shear stirrups number 3 stirrups spaced at 3 inches right so this is the beam 1 you can see that only longitudinal reinforcement is provided at the tension side just like in the cross section and this is beam 2 you can see that the longitudinal steel is same two number 5 bars but transverse reinforcement or the stirrups are also provided and to hold these stirrups top bars are also provided so this is the section uh, uh, at xx right and this is the section at the central line so the central line section are same for both the beams right now uh, this is the arrangement of load application you can see that uh, the load was applied on an a steel i beam and then uh, was distributed on the uh, reinforced concrete beam so basically it is a four point uh, bending test right because two are the supports and two points for the applied load so it is a four point bending test and this is a continuous two span beam this is span 1 and this is span 2 these are the failure conditions and the positive you can see for the positive the cracking is at the bottom and crushing is at the top and for the negative uh, where cracking happens at the top and crushing is happening at the bottom right now uh, 
uh, to discuss the failure mechanism of these beams there are various stages for example <clears throat> the first stage was when there was no external load applied on these beams right so uh, there is uh, when the there is no load applied on this beam so only the self weight of the beam and the weight of this assembly this uh, uh, i beam and these plates etc only their load uh, loads are applied on it and uh, no cracking occurs and nothing uh, so maximum stress is occurred at the section of maximum bending moment which is mid span maximum tension stress at the bottom fibers was much less than the modulus of rupture compressive stress at top fibers was much less than the ultimate concrete compressive stress right no cracks were observed at this stage so basically this is just before uh, starting of the testing now stage 2 is when the uh, load p is applied and it is increased from 0 to p1 p1 is some amount okay and what is that amount which produced tensile stresses at the bottom fibers equal to the modulus of rupture so here concrete starts cracking or it is at the verge of cracking right because the uh, stresses are uh, increasing in the bottom fibers at this stage the entire concrete section was effective with the steel bars at the tension side sustaining a strain equal to that of the surrounding concrete so we already discussed assumptions that strain should be same in steel as uh, uh, in the surrounding concrete so stress in the steel bars was equal to the stress in the adjacent concrete multiplied by the modular ratio because as you know that steel is much stiffer uh, uh, element or uh, material than the concrete and it is not possible that under same strain the stress will be same because the when you multiply the strain the same strain with the elastic modulus of steel and concrete there will be a hell lot of difference so uh, you have to multiply the with the modular ratio which is the ratio of the elastic modulus of steel to that of concrete so the compressive stress of concrete at the top fibers was still very small compared with the compressive strength so here it is at the verge of failure and at the top it is where the stresses are very uh, very small as compared to the compressive strength of concrete at the top so the behavior of beam was elastic within this stage of loading and after this stage that is stage 3 when the load was increased beyond p1 the tensile stresses in the concrete at the tension zone increased until they were greater than the modulus of rupture and cracks developed so this is the first point where the cracks start developing the neutral axis shifted upward why because the cracks extended and close to the level of the shifted neutral axis concrete in the tension zone lost its tensile strength and the steel bars started to work effectively and to resist the entire tensile force so till this point it says that the uh, the full section was uh, working right at the, at the second uh, uh, stage the entire section was resisting the forces but in third stage it says that uh, the steel bar started to work effectively and to resist the entire tensile force so uh, concrete in tension is now uh, neglected between cracks the concrete bottom fibers had tensile stresses but they were of negligible value okay uh, between uh, cracks in concrete see the between these cracks there is some uncracked concrete but it is neglected it can be assumed that concrete below the neutral axis did not participate in resisting external moments and in general the development of cracks and the spacing and maximum width of cracks depend on many factors such as the level of stress in the steel bars distribution of steel bars in the section concrete cover and grade of steel used the fourth stage was that in beam 1 which is uh, without the stirrups the shear stress at the distance of about depth of the beam that is d from the face of the support uh, caused a diagonal crack at approximately 45 degree and uh, the diagonal crack extended downward and till the uh, it uh, uh, to till the level of steel bars and then it's extended horizontally towards the support and when the crack which had been widening gradually reached the end of the beam a concrete piece broke off and failure occurred suddenly so this was the failure of uh, beam 1 right because there was no uh, shear reinforcement or the stirrups however in beam 2 where there was a stirrup a diagonal crack developed similar to that of beam 1 right then other parallel diagonal cracks also appeared and the stirrups started to take an effective part in resisting the principal stress so this is basically beam 1 you can see that 
a diagonal crack this diagonal crack is moving towards uh, this uh, uh, bottom steel and when it reaches it uh, extended horizontally and then failure happens but it is not the case in beam 2 you can see that many diagonal cracks are there and it is not extending to the bottom steel and it is not the crack the failure is not happening here okay so the beam 2 went to this stage 5 when the load is further increased strain increased rapidly until the maximum carrying capacity of the beam was reached in beam 2 the amount of steel reinforcement used was relatively small so this reinforcement is relatively small right the tensile tensile reinforcement or the tension reinforcement so when reached the yield strain can be considered equal to yield stress divided by the modulus of elasticity of steel the strain in concrete was less than the strain at maximum compressive stress it means that the tension reinforcement will fail first uh, and then the compression concrete will fail afterwards the steel bars yielded and the strain in steel increases to about 12 times that of the yield strain right cracks widened sharply deflection of the beam increased greatly and the compressive strain on the concrete increased and figure 2 show the failure shape of the two beams just like i explained right so these were the five stages of uh, describing the failure pattern and the crack generation and propagation next we will discuss the types of flux uh, failure and strain limits